the Palo Alto Public Art Commission meeting. Um, welcome. Do we have any public comments? Do we have to do roll call before public comments? I don't think so. We do need to do roll call first. Oh, there you go. I'd call like to order. call the meeting to, oh, there you go. There we go. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and um, I will go in through the roll call. Com uh, Vice Chair Shen. Present. Commissioner Miyagi. Present. Commissioner Waltuck. Present. And myself, Lauren Gordon, present. Um, any agenda changes, additions, or deletions? Yes, we have one change. Agenda item four, <clears throat> excuse me, Tesla sculpture at 3000 Hanover Street has been removed from the agenda. It will come another time. Okay, thank you. Um, any public comments? Nobody in the audience currently, so no. All right, then we'll move <laughs> on to approve the minutes from our previous meeting on March 20. First, may I have a motion? So moved. And a second? I second. Thank you. Um, all in favor would be uh, Vice Chair Chen? Yes. Commissioner Miyagi? Yes. Commissioner Waltuck? <coughs> yes. And myself, uh, Chair Gordon? Yes. Um, any city comments, official comments? We have a couple. So um, Caspo Studios, oh, well, we'll start with the other one. Okay. So last night was our um, Cubberly meeting um, with uh, with our artist for the Cubberly mural. And um, we had about 10 participants from the public come and uh, heard a presentation from the artist about his previous work. And we were able to solicit feedback from the community about what's special about Cubberly, who is there, um, what, you know, what kind of inspiration could the artist draw from that site? And we got a lot of really great feedback. Um, staff is planning to uh, continue to gather feedback from the public who maybe couldn't attend, uh, most likely through social media. And we're working on um, maybe there's an old school way to do it, like a paper form or something. Um, so that was last night. And then CASPA Open Studios was last weekend. And... Um, I think the number we came up with, it was approximately 150 people who came through over the course of the weekend. It was rather cold and rainy at the beginning, so we got a bit of a slow start. But some of our other partners at Coverly were open and having programming as well. So I think there was a great cross-pollination of, um, of groups there. And you can see some images mm -hmm. there from one of the, uh, the photographers who was traveling through. but lots of families, great diversity of work, um, very fun. And so that is all we have for staff comments. Wonderful, thank you. Let's move on to action items. The first one is Fire Station 5 Mural. And there it is. There is um, Fire Station 5 along uh, Arrasadero Road. Um, and let's see. There's another view of it. It's um, a highly visible spot. Um, you may recall that at the February 15th meeting, the commission approved funding in the amount of $12,000 for a mural for this space. Um, this is the... Um, the opportunity, the, the brief that we sent out to 55 California-based artists on the muralist roster that would be appropriate for the commission who may be interested in creating a site-specific mural for the station. We assembled a, a selection panel of community members to evaluate and rank 36 of those applicants. And this is the selection criteria they were looking at. They're really looking at their, app, their statement and the overall strength of their work samples. Do you find the artwork samples moving? Do they demonstrate artistic quality and excellence? So then, and here's our selection panel. It was a really great panel. 
um, right? Having representatives from Barron Park Neighborhood Association, of course, the deputy fire chief, um, a representative from Barron Park Kids Club, the Palo Alto Community Child Care, Harumo Seto, who is an artist and a cast member, a muralist, and happens to take her kids to a local child care spot in that neighborhood. Um, Shannon Wright, who is one of our CASP artists as well. And then Commissioner Waltuck was part of that discussion. Um, so they narrowed the 36 uh, down to 18, those 18 we discussed. And... That's not the artist. <laughs> it's me. I'm behind the scenes. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. yeah so um, this is the artist, Bodek Luna, um, who was selected uh, as the, the panel's recommendation to the commission for approval. Uh, everyone really gravitated to Bodek's work, uh, thought it was a good fit for the community, uh, really felt that the portrayals of people and nature and the creative use of color was really strong. Um, and so that is the recommendation of the panel. I don't know, Commissioner Waltuck, do you want to speak at all to the the discussion or the, the process of? Um, like you said, it was a great panel because, um, oh. Like you said, it was a great panel because there was so much discussion and People kind of challenged certain notions and, um, you know, everyone felt really free to say what they wanted. It wasn't just everyone being kind of polite and deferring. People really spoke up about their opinions. And, you know, the artists had good, interesting, thoughtful, insightful things to say, as did the community members and the chief. Um, so I think it was rewarding. There was a lot of great, we were choosing between so many great muralists, but we loved, um, like, Elise said, the sense of color um, or the unique use of it, um, the kind of bold statements that he's making uh, and kind of unique um, uh, like contextual elements and compositional elements um, all kind of influence our decision. But it was a pretty clear the number one and number two. It was it was almost unanimous. Um, everyone gravitated. This artist was in everyone's number one and number two, but mostly number ones. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I think really resonated with the panel was when the chief talked about um, a culture of, of having the community and the people they serve keep their dignity on their worst day. And um, a lot of, of this artist's um, statement also had to do with mental wellness and dignity and giving voice. And it was interesting to watch the panel in the course of discussion. And as the, the list got shorter and shorter and shorter, that everyone just really gravitated together toward this artist. It was it was wonderful to see. Yeah, I think that's a good point because at first we were really all over the place. And I remember like looking at some of my highly rated people just fall off and thinking, is it worth fighting? Is it worth fighting for them, or do we have another an, an, enough great other artists uh, still on? And for the most part, I left it. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, so I was recently on another uh, panel for for a mural, mm -hmm. and um, there was a list of um, panelists. Mm -hmm. whose artwork we seen from before, but it looks like this particular artist, I, I don't recall seeing this particular artist's work. Is this artist fairly new to the um, roster of artists that we have for pan uh, murals? No, the all the artists in the roster came in at the same time during that open call. Um, it might be that that artist was not interested in a particular other one, or they dropped out early in the online scoring. So um, there are a lot of artists in there, it's hard to track them all, but there are some phenomenal ones that still haven't been selected yet, but we also have three murals coming downtown. So there's there's opportunity. You know, I certainly enjoy his work, it's very colorful. Mm -hmm. um, and is he LA based? Yes. Okay, that's yeah, that's what it looks like from his artwork. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what he gets, what he puts up. My only objection is that Dodger, uh, <laughs> Dodger print. 
Noted. No Dodgers. <laughs> Now, is there going to be a theme for him to create the work? Absolutely. So um, part of what we discussed with him this week already is um, having a trip up here, meeting with the fire station team, meeting with the neighborhood association, maybe having a community meeting either at the firehouse or in the park immediately behind, um, meeting with the uh, historian. It's a lot of sort of the similar things we do for each project so that the artist is able to hear the voices of all the people in that community, see how people navigate the space, how people will see the mural, whether it's on bike, vehicle, how many people, you know, stop by the firehouse. So um, he'll come do that as a research trip. And in effect, that and the public art master plan should drive his design. How did the deputy fire chief react to the selection? He teams messaged me immediately after hanging up that he was really happy. Wow, that's really exciting. I, I think that uh, Bodak Luna is a great choice and I'm looking forward to seeing the next steps, what, what he comes up with. Um, I This is an action item. And so um, can I please have a motion? To approve. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, in order, uh, we are going to now go through roll call. Um, Vice Chair Chen. Yes. Commissioner Waltuck. Yes. And Commissioner Miyagi. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gordon. Yes. Great. Bodak Luna is approved as project artist. Moving on to the next action item, we are going to talk about collection care for um, homage to silence. Hi, traditionally I'll take the um, here collection item. Um, I don't know, for some, you know, you're <clears throat> always supposed to love all your kids um, equally, but I feel like this piece holds a special place uh, in our hearts. So it's, you know, it's, I'm really glad that we bring this item to the um, commission tonight. So A Mush to Silence by um, a late Jerome Kirk um, was created and uh, purchased by the city and installed um in Palo Alto in 1981. Uh, it's a kinetic piece. Um, the five um, circle elements that you're seeing actually uh, move, moving slowly, gracefully, and silently. So uh, hence uh, the title to the piece, A March to Silence. Um, Jerome Kirk uh, was uh, personally here on site to install the piece originally in um, 80, uh, 1981. Um, you know, during his life, uh, he was very involved um, um, with um, the care um, uh, of the sculpture. Um, thus, in um, let me just refer to my notes. Um, in nineteen um, eighty four, uh, it was actually uh, refurbished for the first time and um, placed on uh, a new um, base. And then, um, according to our archival records, um, there was some damage to the piece that required that <clears throat> the artist um, again deinstalled the piece off site and uh, did some repairs to it. And also, that's when it, that happened in 1994. And that's when uh, that piece was um, um, 19. 1992, excuse me, that's when that piece was refurbished, repainted uh, for the last time. Um, unfortunately, um, the artist passed away in uh, his advanced age um, in early 2010s. Um, but, you know, throughout the lifespan of um, the sculpture on site, it was regularly attended to, uh, evaluated and cleaned uh, for the most part um, by our in-house um, uh, crew. Um, you know, you see that originally it um, it features this really vibrant, um, dynamic red. Um, well, it's been um, 
quite a few years since 1992. And um, we um, engaged um, an art conservator who, um, to come and evaluate uh, the piece and um, condition report it. So <clears throat> really um, the recommendations by the conservators kind of, you know, um, reinforced our like line of thinking that it's really time to start thinking about um, comprehensive refur refurbishment of the piece. Uh, it's um, a large ticket item, so it's something for us to figure out and consider in the near future. But uh, for now, the recommendation is to really um, have the piece um, cleaned um, in depth, you know, just like concerto grade cleaned. Um, and so this is the um, recommendation for the um, commission tonight um, to approve funding in the amount of up to $3,700 uh, for maintenance and conservation of homage to silence. So can I, you're talking about um, the cleaning. Will there be painting or realignment? Not, or not at this point. Okay. Uh, but it's, uh, so there will be in-depth cleaning of all the organic debris, um, um, on the sculpture, I uh, maybe this first piece somewhat shows it more. Um, and also a follow up um, sort of study of the paint um, um, system condition by the conservators. They will be measuring the um, the width of uh, the existing paint um, um, system to really kind of understand the um, existing condition of the steel underneath oh, the, yes. um, you know, the paint uh, system and just kind of like strategizing further about um, the um, refurbishment. But in the future, if, you know, there are two options and we'll bring them separately um, to another commission meeting, but uh, we're just discussing options for the refurbishment um, with the conservator. Okay. Is the piece working well now? Just the mechanics of it. Yes, uh, that's you know that's the absolute just beauty of it. You know, um, so when um, the artist when Jerome Kirk um, did some repairs to the piece in nineteen ninety two, he um, reinstalled um, some gears. You know, like rubber, like um, stoppers and whatnot, and. The conservators were just amazed by the excellent uh, condition of all of those kinetic elements. It's just, um, it works as it's supposed to. It's uh, it's graceful, it's silent, you know, uh, the movements are as they were intended by the artist. And so it, it works really well. It just needs to be cleaned. So just so I understand, the 3700 is to just clean it and assess the quality of the steel? Yeah, it's part. so as part of this cleaning, the conservators will be able to measure the thickness of the existing uh, paint system. And so mm -hmm. are they going to do a kind of a comprehensive assessment of, in addition to cleaning, we're looking at the paint system, but also everything else that may need to be done in the future? Yeah, so we, al we already um, have that condition report um by the conservator uh, they came out um on site earlier this month and they did that okay. you know um, so you know how much yes it be. yes um so we exploring options because it's considered um but for now you know the conservator really agreed that even just having this um deep cleaning will allow that color to pop you know and it will probably help with that sort of like um milkiness that appears on its surface right now so it will really bring just you know that um vibrance back to the piece thank you can you explain about um the thickness of the paint is this supposed to be thicker or thinner i guess i'm just trying to understand the, how the thickness of the paint impacts the underlying structure. Okay, so as I'm not uh, an art conservator, so I am just afraid to kind of like mislead you. Um, I understand that's just um, like a, a standard procedure they do just to kind of understand the structural condition of the metal underneath, you know, because it's been um, a couple of decades. So just like, you know, exposure to the sun, you know, wear and tear, you know, interactions with elements and humans, it all uh, impacts um, sort of like the quality of the paint, right? The condition of the paint. So that's something that they want to do. 
in, and absolutely, yeah. Okay, so what I'm hearing is $3,700 for the report, the, cons the report by the conservator and the cleaning. Of the we already piece. have the report. It's really just for the in-depth cleaning and okay. report on that treatment. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Documentation. Um, would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, I move uh, for for collection care for the um, for the uh, homage to silence piece. Mm -hmm. A second. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Miyagi? Yes. Commissioner Waltuck? Yes. Vice Chair Shen? Yes. And Chair Gordon, yes. Thank you. Moving on to action item number three, um, we're going to discuss Peter Wagner's um, artworks um, intended for the public safety building. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll take this item as well. Let me just share a couple of slides that we have um, for the public safety building. I don't know if you um, recently visited California Avenue, but the building, there's so much change oh. happening around the building. It's just uh, the construction is developing really fast. So we're really nearing sort of the um, the final steps of this very um complex construction project. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so this is a, a digital rendering of the building that I pulled um, from the most recent um, construction report. Uh, it's It can be available on the um, project page uh, for the public um, safety building with public works. Um, Right now, there's so much work going on. And um, as you might remember, we have three pieces that were commissioned as part of 1% um, in municipal development associated with this project. Uh, Peter Wagner designed two interior pieces and one exterior piece. So yesterday, so today we really want to focus on the conversation on the physical protection needs that need to um, take place while the pieces are installed right after the artworks, interior artworks and exterior artworks installed. But there's still some final finishes and touches, some, some, some final construction work you know, um, that will be happening in the lobby and just surrounding the building. So really, it's our responsibility to make sure that um, the pieces remain safe and um, no, nothing bad happens to them, no impact. So this picture you're looking at, that actually happened, uh, that was taken yesterday during our walkthrough um, with <laughs> lots of hard hats, um, with um, the public art, uh, public um works uh, staff and also um, a consultant from at how fine art services uh, it's the same company we are working with on the protection systems at roth right um they're very experienced like one of their like latest most recent projects um is uh to move the um, Diego Rivera mural, for example, from the SF MoMA, right? So that's the caliber of um, specialists we're talking about. So just to briefly walk you through the timeline here, uh, 2018, Peter Wagner was selected to create um, three site-specific artworks. Uh, he jumped on on uh, his uh, community engagement and design development process that year. Uh, next year, in 2019, uh, the Public Art Commission approves um, three artworks. Uh, two artworks, um, 1,100 decisions <laughs> and chance impression uh, to be integrated into the lobby space of this building. And that's why we have this picture, just kind of like orient you um, where it's going to be. And the street level, now it's like working title, will be a piece integrated into an exterior wall. So the installation... Um, of these three artworks is, uh, is scheduled for June, 2023. End of June, the, oh my gosh, 24. <laughs> so I'm so sorry, long week. June, 2024. Um, this is when the <clears throat> artist contract 
will be expiring. So really, it's one of the considerations why these artworks need to be integrated yeah. into um, the interior now. But also uh, another primary reason is that you see, so you see that opening in the wall, right, with the metal framing, that's where 100,000 decisions will be uh, um, installed, embedded. So before the um, the walls need to be completely um, finished, you know, the artworks need to be installed. So, you know, we're kind of moving along with the overall construction sort of like sequence in the schedule. Um, and this is when um, we reached out to AdHow to solicit their expertise in creating physical protections, essentially, that would be placed right after the pieces are installed. So whenever, you know, some uh, lobby furniture gets installed or some finishing touches, you know, happen, um, the pieces remain uh, protected. And hence the recommendation today. Let me just move me. Um, we recommend um, the allocation of funds in the amount of up to $11,910 for um, the design and, in, um, and assembly of uh, custom protection systems for artworks by Peter Wagner um, for the public safety building at 250 Sherman Avenue. Thank you. I do just want to make a quick clarification that this is on the high side. We're not sure that we'll need yes. protections for the exterior piece, but this is just in case we need it, that the funding is allocated and we have their contract in place. Yeah. Is, um, so the the interior piece um, is where all those striations are. And so it's a two dimensional piece that will be installed in the wall. And then the protection is just like a visqueen, like what is the the, Sort of, it's going to be more rigid, um, you know, um, just imagine like a movable wall, right? Okay. A more rigid protection. So for example, if um, weighted um, at the bottom, um, so if somebody is moving, you know, have a furniture or there's a cherry picker, you know, bumps into it, it stays stable and it protects. And also it's going to be uh, padded on the inside, right? And um, protecting the artwork. Um, and also designed in a way that will be also protecting the artworks from any construction dust. Um, so, so this is constructed specifically to protect this artwork and it's temporary because when the building opens, it will be taken Absolutely. Down. Do you yes. have any sense of how long between installation of the artwork and opening of the building? So we're, it's, it's, you know, it's um, so many variables. Uh, tentatively, the conversation yes, the, yes, that it was for about two months, you know. Um, but I'm just hesitant to give you like a more precise, you know, like timeline. I'm just trying to gauge the durability right. of it, mm -hmm. and you know, how long. And so, is that the case with both interiors that they're two dimensional, so similar? Yes. Yeah, Thank similar you. protections. Um, we believe the protections will need to be in place certainly for two months. Um, as for when the building actually opens, there's a lot of unknowns there because they have to move their emergency response, 911. There's a lot that needs to happen before they can, they're fully functional in that building. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see, but having that portable wall with a rigid protection in front of it is not a bad idea when you've got people coming and going. <laughs> phased. I mean, right. It's phased, uh, opening because- there's so many factors that have to that are moving in and out. yes, this is an issue of first impression for me. Um, it, it seems like previously, I I don't believe I remember um, a uh, an action item before us where we are talking about temporary protection of an installation. Is it because, and this is for my edification, is it because usually the timing of the public art piece and the completion, you know, the timing of it uh, sort of resolves this particular risk? That's a good question. Um, when it's associated with construction and these are integrated into the wall, so the artwork, the space you're looking at there will be flush with the wall. So it's actually embedded into the space. Um, 
there are a lot of moving puzzle pieces to the opening of this building. So Public Works is trying to figure out what that choreography looks like. So, um, so no, we haven't had to build a rigid protection before, but we have had some protections in place. So usually it's been sort of impromptu, given the value and the scale of these projects, we want to make darn sure they don't get scratched up or dusty. Got it. And I guess the only recommendation I have is for future reference when we are uh, sketching out and for some of the you know projects that we supervise, obviously, if the the ticket price is high enough, you know how you itemize mm -hmm. construction, installation, whatever. And I wonder if this should be also a placeholder line item mm -hmm. that, you know, can issue spot for folks when they are planning out the installation. That's an interesting thought. We can certainly look at that for future CIP projects. Yeah, what is, I'm, oh, go no, you, you go ahead. No. I, I'm a little fuzzy. Do you have a picture of the 100 K decisions. Um, and the other thing is, where is it going on that wall? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I see a bunch of windows and. Yeah. yeah. So the 100,000 decisions piece will be um, installed in this frame, okay. right? So you see this support backing wall had been already designed and put in place. And um, the fabricator um, the artists working okay. with, yeah, they will be delivering and installing. That's that, the actual backing. So you're really almost talking like a freight elevator lining type thing to, to go in to protect that, uh, that piece that's going up. It's, um, I'm not, well, heavier maybe. I'm, I'm not sure what freight elevator lining looks like, but essentially it would be like the three section wall right? Just a portable wall that's weighted at the bottom that gets assembled on site and placed in front of it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Fredo, you know, they have like a big uh, moving blanket yeah. that's hanging on the wall. That's okay. weighted on yeah. the bottom, the same type <laughs> thing. Okay. What is the piece made out of? I don't remember the exact type of plastic. It's the same kind of plastics that are used in um, emergency response gear, like helmets and um, various like police elements. So it's the same plastics. It was the piece with all the black and white elements. The idea that um, officers are making, you know, a hundred thousand decisions a day on, on, you know, am I going to pull this person over? Am I going to ask these questions? Am I going to, you know, so that's sort of where the narrative came, but it's all these thin slivers of a black and white plastic individual sheets that get installed within this frame. So it'll be flush with the wall. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple more questions. Will the artist be on site for this installation? Empty yes, it. the artist is always on site to oversee the installation of the artwork. Perfect. Yep. And then when the protection goes up, will he be there as well? Actually, the protections we're going to oversee as staff. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And then for the funding of the um, protection, where is the funding coming from for this? It's coming from our maintenance fund. And we're okay. nearing the end of that fiscal year. And so we have the funding available there to um, to use it for this purpose. Great. And where's the other piece, the second piece for protection going? You can just describe. It doesn't sound like we have a picture of it. It's going to be on the opposite wall, kind of behind my back. I'm in the pink vest, of course. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I remember from originally it, where yeah, we it's were having. The frame, yeah. Out of the frame of this picture, but it's going to be sort of kitty corner um towards the glass entrance in the back of this uh, picture but also in embedded into um a wall right next to the reception area mm -hmm. okay that's great thank you for bringing this to our attention and asking and answering all these questions um would someone like to make a motion Um, I move for the allocation of funds in the amount of up to $11,910 for a custom protection system for the artwork by artist Peter Wagner for the public safety building. Second. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair Shen. Yes. Commissioner Miyagi. Yes. Commissioner Waltuck. Yes. And Commissioner Gordon. Yes. Approved. Thank you. 
Now we're moving on to non-action items, and uh, we are going to learn about the utility boxes. Art lift grants. Um, apparently, the word got out pretty well. <laughs> so here are some of the statistics as it stands right now. We had 120 artists who submitted applications. Um, we had some of them who were disqualified. They didn't qualify for it, but we have 102 applications that are being reviewed by the panel, which if you all recall how many you have reviewed on a panel, 102 is a lot. Um, luckily, they're still getting to pick one out of every five. So um, on our selection panel, you see here we have Ryan Johnson from um, Public Works Utilities, who is our colleague who really wanted to champion this project and encouraged us to move forward with it, um, as Public Works has always been a great partner for us in um, everything that we do out in the field. And so it's really nice to be able to work with him and include him in this. Um, Commissioner Nia Taylor is doing one on her way off um, serving. She said, yes, I'm happy to do it one more time. Um, Donnie Foley, who is at the Pacific Art League right across the way. Um, John Contreras, who is an artist and also um, an employee of the Palo Alto Art Center. And Jamal Diamond, who is an artist from San Jose, right? So um, they are hopefully hard at work on their scoring right now. And um, so they should be finished by noon tomorrow. And then we have a meeting on Monday to look at where the rankings fall and who's on the bubble and see if any adjust they want to make any adjustments. And um, and then away we go. Uh, one question about the stipend. Does that mm -hmm. include materials, uh, paint, anti-graffiti, color coding, any of that stuff? It includes the paint, not the graffiti coding. We're going to take care of that separately. So, um, yeah. It's uh, so we saw some models where programs loaned them the graffiti coating and then it was trouble getting it back and it's really expensive. So um, I think we may dispatch crew or us. We'll see. <laughs> what about the um, the pre of the box, the pre work of the boxes? Will they be cleaned and all that so the paint will adhere and all that grime will be off and that sort of stuff? That's a great question. And the boxes are in all different condition. Of, of The one there looks pretty um, sad. Most of the ones we're working on aren't in that bad of shape. But some of those with the bright coating, they are going to need a light sanding. So we are purchasing sandpaper to give to the artist for that. Um, but the prep is largely going to fall to them. With 20 boxes, we couldn't take that on. I might call you. Well, that is really exciting. That's a great art lift grant project. Thank you. Um, are there any public letters? There were none this month. Um, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? I, I have one. Uh, April is arts month in California. It's been designated by that by the uh, legislature. And yesterday, now the last two days, in fact, in Sacramento was advocacy day and i participated yesterday i spoke to three of my representatives and if you have a chance do that go up in sacramento your representative your legislature either your senator or your assembly member and we spoke to i spoke to three but um and you know passed on what uh, the californians for the arts and the california arts council was really pushing and one thing is a dollar per head for funding for the California Arts Council, which is $40 million. California is 36th in the nation for arts funding behind Florida and Mississippi. So we need to, and we know it's, it's a hard budget times now, so the line has to be held at what it is now, but as, the, as more monies come in to get that up to at least a dollar level and more for funding for, for the arts. Well, thank you for your advocacy work and thanks for enlightening us. It's great that you went. And right. it's... It was really good. Um, actually, I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of driving to Sacramento, can we just call our uh, representative? Yes. Yep. I have, um, I can, I'll, I'll send it to Elise, but uh, talking points. And uh, that you can uh, send to your to your assembly member or your senator. Very good. 
Thank you for sharing that. Any other comments, questions, or announcements? Okay, well, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.